So hi everyone, welcome to 20 Minute Marketing. I hope you are having a great day. Um, thanks for listening as always. Today I have a really exciting guest that's going to be able to hopefully give us some great insights into marketing um, for B2B, B2C, lots of experience that I'm sure you'll be able to give us um, a bit of an introduction on. So hi Sam, first of all, hope you're all right. Hi Liam, yeah, very well, thanks, how are you? Good, I'm good, thank you. I'm just going to let you spend a minute or two just explaining who you are, the company that you sort of work for now, and a little bit of a background on yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm Head of Business Development at Fantastic Media. Um, So my role is almost as a consultant between uh, the agency and businesses out there. Um, So what I'm there to do is to work with potential new clients to solve uh, cr- critical business problems and um, being able to align marketing channels that will allow certain businesses to achieve uh, their business objectives. Um, Fantastic Media is a, a full service a strategic marketing consultancy. Um, so what that basically means is that we cover everything um, in the marketing world. So everything from digital to web- website development all the way through to brand strategy, uh, social media, communications, PR, so on and so forth. Um, so I suppose that's myself in a nutshell. Um, I've been in the agency landscape for over six years. Um, I've been involved in marketing and media and business development for the majority of my career. Um, and I suppose I'll never leave now. <laughs> yeah, once you're in it, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so yeah, quite quite a, a big background and a long um, background in the industry. Um, so just to... as as always, keep it in the structure of 20 minutes, hopefully. We'll move on to the main topics and get started on your perception of marketing and get some great insights from you. Great. Thank you. All right, everyone, time to dive into the main part of the podcast. So we're going to talk a little bit about Sam's experience, his role, and his opinion on marketing in 2019. So first of all, what would you say that you sort of focus on the most in your daily role? Uh, my my job is is really to, uh, about strategizing um, and being able to understand a business's objectives. Um, so my role is really about getting to understand that person and that business um, to the fine detail. So then I need to be able to translate that information uh, correctly back to the agency so that the right people can pull together the right plan um, using the right marketing tactics um, to activate. Because we all know as uh, both B two B and B two C. Different in businesses and different industries don't all have an off the shelf um, way of doing things. So I need to make sure that what what I understand is is communicatable back to the agency so that they can come back to me with a very solid um, strategy for for the future for that business. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm sure, as everyone's aware, not all two tracks, two strategies are the same. Do you see quite often that? People have business objectives that are too specific or too vague um, um, when you sort of chat with them initially. I mean, I suppose it, the the end goal for most businesses is to ultimately make more money. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what we like to do is understand how we can get there at different levels. Um, so we then break those objectives down into further KPIs. So as an example, um, an awareness campaign using PR and, and social media might have certain KPIs around engagement, um, around click-throughs to website, and so on like that. They won't directly be linked to revenue. Yeah. But other tactics such as Google pay-per-click or LinkedIn marketing or something like that, they'll be directly related to generating leads through the business. Of course, so yeah. Because yeah. we're So because we're an integrated agency, we want to be able to cover the whole spectrum. We want to be able to cover everything and give best advice for our clients. Um, so we make sure that every channel is covered with the best uh, tactic, um, all anchored to clear KPIs, which all ultimately will result in uh, achieving more money, which is usually the end goal. In terms of businesses being realistic, we can't say they're not because you know they've, they've, they've been in business for a while. They want to achieve something and, we need to be able to tell them whether or not they can do that. And if we don't believe it's possible, then we'll just be very honest and say, we don't, we don't believe we can help you. Um, Absolutely. You know, yeah. And that's how we've built the business. We've built it to be 
very honest and very accountable at the same time. Um, we're, we're in a very great position. You know, the agency's over 12 years old, so we don't really need to, um, you know, pull in companies and, and projects just to, to make Just them. for the sake of it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, do you, it's interesting from, a, from an agency standpoint, because a, a few of my other guests have worked in marketing roles for, for like one specific business. Yeah. Um, do you, how do you go about differentiating your strategy for a B2B or a B2C company? Well, B2B, um, generally speaking, well, the end goal for those guys will be to um, have a consultation with their sales team or it will result in some sort of relationship building um, where there are large accounts involved. So the tactics there are all, are all m- more around building awareness um, and beating competition, really. Um, so the difference between their, those guys and a, a potential B2C businesses that it is a long game it's more about awareness b to c there are much quicker wins involved um and there are certain tactics such as ppc that you can use to get quicker results um so it, there's a fine there is there's massive differences between the two um and the the results are, are ultimately are varied as well so you need to be careful about what you're recommending to certain businesses in certain industries because uh for example um a tyre manufacturer who only sells to um, QuickFit, for example, they don't need to have a, a fantastic social media strategy because it's just not where their potential customers are. But on the flip side, LinkedIn could be a fantastic opportunity for them if they're wanting to build relationships with um, people at QuickFit, as an example. Yeah. So it's a completely different ball game. Um, so it's about understanding where your client lies and what they're actually trying to achieve, so you can make that right recommendation. Yeah, and like what platforms do you, essentially your customers are going to be using. Absolutely. Um, and, and focusing in all your attention on that one, you don't have to use. I think this has been like a common theme. You don't have to spread yourself across all platforms and all different types of marketing. You just need to find out what it is that your customers and consumers are looking at. Absolutely. Find what works and find where, focus on what you do best and focus on where you're going to find it. Um, and just sort of moving on, if you, uh, if you had to pick like a couple of elements of marketing yourself that you enjoy the most or you, you get the best results out of, what would you say that it, it is? I know that's quite vague because it varies <laughs> between, cu- between customers but, yeah. um, on a, and companies, but on a, on a personal level sort of. Um, well, my... my personal background is very much behind design branding and an image so I'm quite an aesthetically driven person I take a lot of interest in um, companies rebranding and, and website design but my career background has has been predominantly in digital so yeah. that's where most of my my um, I'm not going to say expertise but where most of my knowledge is um, I think yeah and it's important aspect of, I think sort of the branding side of it gets pushed down, but if, if you don't have a landing page that people are going to like or be engaged in, then the social media side of it and um, the initial outreach doesn't, it's not going to have an, an impact. Exactly. They both, they, they both have to complement each other. And um, but the more naive businesses or the more immature marketers will neglect one or the other. Um, one may think that it's turning on, your Google paid search will deliver results. But if ultimately the brand is non-existent, the London experience is terrible and the website looks um, second rate, then you're going to dis- disengage with that potential customer. So it's it's very important to, to balance the both. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think chances are some customers will just, they might use pay per click, but they'll just they'll just go back to Google and go down to the second ad. Absolutely. Um, and then you're spending money as well. It's not just um, a free click. Exactly. Then it becomes wasted budget. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you probably come across quite a lot of tools that yourself and and companies use. Yeah. Um, do you have any sort of insights or anything that you could help fellow marketers gain value from at all? I was just curious to to see that. Yeah, I mean, anybody um, who's looking to go into the marketing space from an account management perspective or business development, then having a really robust organization is is what's going to get you far. So using a really um, reputable CRM system, I use Pipedrive. Um, It's a really well-designed system, and it does everything I need it to do and more. 
Um, but in terms of your other elements from other roles, um, I think social listening is, is brilliant because social listening allows you to procure um, content and curate content around what people are actually talking about in the, in the now. Um, yeah. So, you know, using tools like Garkana and, and things like that to be able to actually discover what topic of conversation is going on and what people's opinions are, you can start to shape a, a content strategy around that. And um, content marketing at the minute is, is probably one of the most talked about um, things at the minute, but there's a lot of bad content going out there. So if you use, yeah. if you use the right tools to get the right um, answers to what people are talking about, then I think you'll have a lot more success in, in having quality content over quantity. Yeah, and I think if people sort of understand that you don't always have to talk about your business, you can talk about anything in your industry or even in marketing or anything that you think is going to help your customers out, chances are they'll engage with it. Sure. Um, just sort of moving on as well, uh, this is where it becomes a little bit more personal, I guess, than sort of how your company runs. Um, how do you think personally marketing might have changed over the last few years and, and how consumers have changed their way of purchasing or looking for companies? Yeah, well, my my opinion always stems back to the agency way of things being doing. So um, the way in which marketing has, has developed over the last few years is that it's just become very saturated. Um, a lot of marketers and agencies are springing up out of nowhere, un- underqualified, and don't really follow best practice. So a lot of businesses end up you know, buying cheap and having to do it again because things aren't being done correctly. Yeah. Um, but the way in which people purchase things has changed tremendously over the last few years and it, and it changes by the minute, you know, it all goes back to what technology is available um, and how retailers are, are selling uh, products. But B2B is an interesting one because they're notoriously always behind. So if you take digital as an example, B2B is a, a prime opportunity for B2B marketers in the minute because they can now use digital uh, technology to uh, facilitate their marketing goals. Um, so it, it's changing by the minute. And, it, you know, where we were 10 years ago is, is you know, considerably further away from where we're going to be in 10 years' time as well. So it's interesting. Yeah. Just sort of move. It's, I guess that leads into like a follow up question. Where where do you think it will end up in like five ten years? Because I personally, all I hear at the minute is like AI and VR and all these things. Absolutely. But I'm not quite sure if they're realistic for your regular size B two B or your small company to to be focusing on. You're right. Yeah, you are. I mean, that is, is potentially what I was going to say. I mean, you, you hear those things as you mentioned. You know, we're heading into an even more digitally assisted era. Um, our lives as people um, and not consumers depend on Google massively. You know, we're constantly searching for answers to curiosities and questions that we've got. And the way in which those answers have been served to us, not just by Google, but Alexa and Siri is an example through voice search, yeah. is changing massively. Um, and the way in which those answers have been given to people um, is on brand. So brand is what's now taking priority. So when Alexa or Siri or Google Voice responds to a query um, and it's a, it's a query that someone might ask in the realms of um, can you tell me who uh, regional tyre manufacturers are the response that those voice activated uh, technologies will give is whoever is performing the best on brand Yeah. so the focus for, for marketers with, for, with where digital is going from a B2B perspective, should very much be focused on brand, as I mentioned earlier on, is that that's where B2B marketers will have the most success, is by building a sustainable and um, long uh, a brand built for longevity. By not neglecting that, that's where businesses will be able to succeed in this, and I'll put this in inverted commas, futuristic world we're heading into. Absolutely. Um, they do think... Go, on. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so it, uh, what I was going to finish on there is that, yeah, voice search, machine learning and AI, they all do sound like buzzwords, but it's where people are starting to consume things. So um, I think we're going to become even more reliant on the digital world. But what what people in the marketing space need to remember is that you need everybody that's being served is a, is, is a human. Um, so what you need to not forget is that we are here to connect and advertise to other humans and not just focus on the data side of things. It's about how you can, you know, connect with people ultimately. 
Yeah, and I think one thing I sort of touched uh, that grabbed me from sort of your explanation there is that if you have the brand, it doesn't really matter what platform is the in platform or what technology is out because you'll always make it successful based on your brand. Whereas if you're really good on social media or, again, if, if you're the first company that launches VR but you don't have a good brand, then you're going to fail. Absolutely, because someone will come ahead and they'll just steal or manipulate the idea and make it brandable. You know, you look, you look at other products and services out there at the minute, a lot of things are going subscription-led. You know, you look at, at contact lenses, um, you look at other things in that space, uh, like teeth whining, everything's becoming um, very much subscription-led. Yeah. But it's not anything new. These are just existing products that have been rebranded and repackaged up in a different manner. And that's where um, brand is going to become so important. Absolutely, yeah. Also, the fulfillment from your own business point of view, you know, you don't just need a good brand, you need to have great customer service, but that all becomes part of your core values of a business, I suppose, so all part of brand again. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we've covered quite a lot, and I think the key thing to run through it, while running through the episode is branding um, and focusing on specific um, uh excuse me, lost my words there, specific <laughs> platforms, depending on whether you're B2C, B2B, et cetera. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to say just to sort of summarise or round up, or if not, we'll move on to a little bit of graduate chat. No, no, I would, I would agree with you completely. I think brand, as ever, is as important as ever, um, regardless of where we're at in, in the world, whether it was 1930 with, with the Coca-Cola and, and their calligraphied logo that's just existed forever, or whether we're in 2019 and it's mobile first designs with Berber with their logos. Brand is what everybody recognizes and what people talk about, not what your Google advert looks like. So the importance is always and will always be around how you communicate your brand and how you can connect with ultimately humans. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the human element is, is a very good point as well. It hasn't been mentioned and it's, it's so obvious that talking to humans, not robots and not computers. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, we, humans run this world, not robots. And uh, eventually, you know, machines will serve us. But again, the advertise the way in which we consume things will always end in, in a human. So that's a, that's the key thing to take away from that. Of course, yep. Yeah. Yep. So thanks for a great um, middle section. Uh, if you stay with us, everyone, just for a few minutes, then we'll talk about a uh, bit of graduate advice and some insights that Sam can help us out with. Thank you. All right, everyone, just uh, to summarize, for the last topic, we are going to be talking a little bit about graduate advice. Again, it will hopefully benefit graduates and people that are looking to employ graduates, maybe. Um, so I'm sure Sam will give you a bit of an insight um, both sort of on both sort of ends of the scale. So first of all, Sam, do you have any tips for graduates that are applying for jobs? I know at the moment it's quite difficult. If you go on job sites, there's thousands to choose from, and it can be quite a bit of a cluster. Sure. I think the, the the one thing to consider is, and I keep talking about people and humans, is that that's where you will succeed. If you want to be lit, um, go through a recruitment company that specialises in marketing, great, they'll do the job for you. Ultimately, that's how I ended up at Fantastic, but I have a great relationship um, with with the person that recruited me. Um, so that is obviously a good option for you. Expect you're going to the recruitment companies that do specialise in in marketing or creative services. Yeah. But secondly, if you're not having any luck with that, or because you know you feel you haven't got the right experience, just reaching out directly to people on LinkedIn is perfect. You know, you can you can you can search for in, uh, agencies or businesses in a certain location, and you can you can connect with them and send them a message and say. I've, I've just left uni, I've got a, a 2-1 in, in uh, digital marketing or, or, what, or I've got a first from Leeds University in, in um, business management as an example. Um, people that are recruiting would take that and, and respond to that in a much better way than being sent a CV from a recruiter or a job board. You will, it will be a numbers game, of course, because you know people are busy, but um, you know people don't want to pay massive recruitment fees these days because it can be expensive. So a big, big opportunity is, is to is to utilize LinkedIn because that's where the people are. And, you know, these people are using LinkedIn on a daily basis. So, you know, try your luck on there and, and I think you'll have good success. Yeah. And the, the worst thing that they can say is no. 
absolutely so, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with it taking a little bit of time to get where you need to be definitely um i think we're in a world where everyone needs to rush to to be successful and, and be at the top yeah um, but there's there's no damage or danger in it taking you a little bit of time to get that perfect role or to even to get a first job in digital or in marketing or whatever it is definitely and what i would say is if you were going to join an agency or a company is that don't be um don't feel glamorized by the name or the size of the business really take on board the people you're meeting and what they're going to give to you in terms of a job i've worked at some of the biggest agencies in leeds and in new zealand and ultimately what you want is to be happy you want to enjoy what you're doing um you don't want to if you want to work for the best and the big, biggest company, great, but that isn't ultimately always going to give you happiness. Um, and I think that's why we all work. We all work and want to be happy and want to make money. Um, so really take on board what people are interviewing you and the questions you're asking because you don't just want to you know, be that person that keeps jumping from company to company. So that's the one piece of advice I would give when it comes to actually selecting uh, yeah. the job of choice. If you're in that luxury position of being able to choose options. Yeah, of course, yeah. And then I'm just going to summarise with one final sort of um, question. So if you were on a board yourself that was hiring a graduate or someone that had just come out of even school, yeah. um, besides the qualifications and, and, and the education side of it, what sort of knowledge or skills would you be looking for for them to stand out? A, a few things, really. Um, people's skills, ultimately. Can you talk to other people? Because um, in marketing... Again, you're selling to other humans. You know? So can you hold a conversation with someone? Can you can you be professional? Um, and can you sound like you know what you're talking about? Um, ultimately, you need to be able to understand the commercial elements of what you're doing. So how can what you're doing have an impact on sales and growth from a business? Uh, being able to think laterally, so not just you know thinking in a straight line. How can you come up with some creative ideas to solve problems, you know? Yeah, some businesses don't like it, but I'm a big advocate of change if change is going to work. Um, so thinking about new things, um, and also how can you solve business problems with their actual skill set? So how how are you and how is what you do going to be of benefit to that company you are going to work for? Or if you were an agency, what could you give to clients? So those are the types of questions that I would be asking um, and yep. the skills I'd be looking for. Um, so yeah, it's not uh, as from what I've taken out of it. it's not just like who can um, create the best thing or who's got the the best degree there's a whole different range of, of skills and, and things and there is just being being friendly and approachable is half of the battle I feel it, sometimes. it absolutely is and I think if you show that you have those skills and that awareness and you ask questions in that remit interviewee interviewers will think that you are really switched on and they'll know that you care yeah. yeah there's a lot of people out there that can do seo or they can do google advertising but there are not a lot of people that can understand the actual commercial side of it or anything like that if you can yeah. demonstrate that in that that knowledge then that will go a long way with with, with people of course yeah um so yeah i'm just going to sum it up we probably a couple of minutes over 20 um thanks for listening guys i uh, hope you've been enjoying it and as always i've learned some great insights from sam myself hope you have as well um big thanks to sam for being um a great guest brilliant thanks Liam. all right thank you